So when uh, Sarah and I, my wife, my wife Sarah, when we had been dating for a little while, we've been dating for a few months, we weren't quite at the engagement phase in our relationship yet. Maybe we were a month or two out, but we've been dating for a little while. Uh, she went on a missions trip, a medical missions trip to Cote d'Ivoire, Africa, the Ivory Coast. And she was gone for like three and a half weeks, so, so it was a while. And um, I knew, because we had never spent so much time apart, I knew I was going to miss her. And I hoped and I thought, I was pretty sure she was going to miss me too. <laughs> So in preparation for this journey, preparation for her trip, what I did is I made her this. This is a small book that is filled with letters and prayers and Bible verses. Yes, I gave her homework. <laughs> that she would read each and every day of her, of her missionary journey. And what I did is I made it like an advent calendar. Also, if you're looking for a spouse, take notes. Um, I made it like an advent calendar. So I had, I had masking taped each day shut. And so when she got to June 18th, she had to take a knife or a pen or whatever, cut it open so she couldn't read it all at once. So she had to do it one per day, and she got one letter from me, one prayer from me, a Bible verse. And I think I also made her read through Romans. <laughs> Uh, she puts up with so much, but there's but there's a lot of good there's a lot of good in here. Also, I worked out the days. This is just me just um, flexing at this point. I worked out the days on here, and you see there's a letter on every day. I found out that the exact number of days in here spell out strong and courageous, so I wrote put that on there too. Yeah, so there were lots. There there are many facets to this gift, and I was proud of this. And she was really blessed by it. And I gave it to her to encourage her, to comfort her, to like spur her on in her ministry. Because who knows what she was going to encounter out there. Like there's a lot of, uh, there's, there's a lot of spiritual stuff over, over in Africa. There's a lot of, you know, spiritual warfare is a real thing. So I wanted to give this to her, to comfort her, and to encourage her, and lead her along the way. But I think more than anything else, I gave this to her as a way for me to be with her. So she wouldn't be alone. So she, would, so she would feel my presence, even though we were thousands of miles away. And it totally worked. <laughs> and it totally worked, because after those three and a half weeks went by, I remember her coming off the plane. And you know, slow motion happened. You know, it's, the, the time stood still. And you know, I see her, she sees me, and we like run toward each other, <laughs> reunited, you know, and, and you know, we, we embrace, we haven't seen each other in so long, and I say to her, Sarah, I missed you so much, and she turns to me and looks me right in the eye and says, I didn't miss you at all, <laughs> and if you know Sarah, that is so perfect, it's so typical of her, I didn't miss you at all, and so I, t I take a step back, and I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> I have been suffering <laughs> for three and a half weeks. And she says, no, 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 because of the journal. I didn't miss you at all because every single day I felt that you were with me. I felt that you were speaking to me. You were praying over me. You were even giving me homework. <laughs> oh, man. Yikes. To comfort and encourage me. Because you see, through my words, the words that I wrote on these pages, Sarah experienced my presence. Because really, our words are an essential part of who we are. The way that I speak, the way that I communicate, is fundamentally different from the way that you guys communicate. You could all tell the people you love. You can hear their voice in the crowd. You could even be given maybe a couple of letters that were written by people you love and, pe and random people, and you'd be able to pick out who wrote which because we all write, we all speak in a unique way that reflects who we are as people. It is almost, it's like intrinsic to who we are, our words. Does that make sense? So by giving her this book, in fact, I was giving her myself. 
I was giving her a piece of myself to take along with her on her journey. And it is for that exact same reason that God gave you this. You see, this is a small book filled with pre-written letters and prayers and poems and songs and stories that were written for you so that you can experience the presence of God every single day. You can take it with you every single day. And when you read it, you experience his presence. You encounter him in new and unique ways. You see, the Bible isn't just a law book like sometimes we think about it. It's not just a book full of rules and regulations. I mean, if you took it all apart and you took out the rules and regulations and like made like a diagram of it, it's like 2%. 2% of this is don't do this, don't do this. Do this, do this, do this. This is a love letter. The Bible is a love letter to you and you and you. It's God's love letter to his church. It's his very word. It is God revealing himself to you, showing you who he is and how he wants to be a part of your life. He wants to go with you wherever you're going. He wants to guide you, comfort you, teach you, discipline you. But more than anything else, he wants to give you life breathe life into you. The Bible is an encounter with Jesus. And that's the title of my message. The Bible is an encounter with Jesus. And I can think of no better passage to illustrate this truth than Psalm 119, which if you know your Bible, you know that Psalm 119, this is the longest book in the entire Bible in one single chapter. And it trumps all the other ones by far the longest. But why is it so long? It's because it's so important. And it's, it's not just a chapter of a book, it's a song. This is like an epic ballad written by King David, inspired by the Holy Spirit. You know that all, all scripture is God-breathed? God, it's written by, by dozens of different people, but every single word is breathed out by God through his Holy Spirit. So it's as if it is God speaking directly to you. So Psalm 119, David has dedicated a huge amount of his time, a huge amount of his energy, and so has the Holy Spirit to instructing us and comforting us and guiding us through it. And we're going to read the whole thing. No, I'm just kidding. We're not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> I debated it, though. I really thought about it because I was, I was reading through, I read through it multiple times this week, and I just be at, in tears because of this chapter, because of this song written by David, inspired by the Holy Spirit, about how much David cherished God's word. He loved it. He needed it to sustain him for his very life. And how he encountered God through it through good times and bad. And you know, if we've been going through First and Second Samuel in our Bible reading plan, David went through it. He went through terrible times and really good times too, trusting in God's word all along the way. So I went through and I did the hard work for you guys. So we're not here for an hour and a half. Though you gained an hour. No, we lost an hour? Well, either way, I could have taken an extra hour with this. <laughs> but I chose not to because I love you. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> I went through, and I found there are five main themes of encountering God through his word. Like, there, guys, there's like over 150 verses in here. So I went through every single one, and I found five categories of how David encountered God through his word. And this is how you can also encounter God through his word. Are you ready to start? Okay, so we're going to be in Psalm 119 for a while. So if you want to open your Bible, you can go ahead and do that right now. Psalm, Psalm, Book of Psalms is right in the middle of the Bible. If you open it flat, you're probably there. If you're not, just fish around a little bit. You'll find it in a sec. Psalm 119, and I grouped the, I grouped the, the verses together. So we're going to read them all together. You can read them on the screen if it's easier. 
How do you encounter God through your word? Number one, Jesus guides you through his word. Jesus guides you through his word. Verse 26 says, I told you my plans, and you answered. David lifted up his plans to the Lord. Lord, this is what I want to do. 59 says, I pondered the direction of my life, and I turned to follow your laws. And do you see this turning here? It's like, God, here are my plans. I'm going to turn and follow what you want me to do. Make me walk along the path of your commands, for that is where my happiness is found. And verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. You see, when you allow God to guide you through his word, to change your direction, to set your path, to be that guiding light as you go through your life, you never have to worry where your life is going because you're going the way that God deemed best, and he's the master of the universe. He created everything and laid out everything for you. So as you read his word, as this week, as you pick up your Bible, allow him to lead you. Allow him to change your mind, to change your path. Just see how your life improves. David's life has gone so many different ways. I think of David, he's um, sitting, he, he, him and his men are hiding in the back of, the ca- of a cave when King Saul is running out to kill him. And then King Saul needs to use the restroom Sorry, I can't say that in church usually, but he needs to use the restroom, and he chooses the same cave by himself that David is inside. And David's men speak to him and say, surely, David, the Lord is handing this man into your, in, into your hand to kill him so that you can be the king of Israel. And David says, no, I will not put lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. And he lets Saul go because he was sensitive to the word of the Lord, and he was sensitive to what God was speaking in his life, and so he let what the world said was a good path go away from him and chose to wait because that's what God said was best. And God blessed him tremendously because of it. Because he said, yeah, that's a good way, but God's way is better. May that be for you. May you read scripture and realize there's a better way for you if you follow it. Amen? Amen. Jesus comforts you. Number two, Jesus comforts you through his word. David went through it. I told you this. Verse 28, I weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. As pressure and stress bear down upon me. How many of you have felt that? Just the pressure, the weight of this world bear down upon you. I I can't even breathe my job, my family, everything, that I, all my responsibilities, this sickness that's come upon my family, this death that's come upon my family, I can't even bear it right now. Lord, I weep with sorrow. Comfort me by your word. But as pressure and the stress bear down upon me, I find joy in your commands. I find joy and harmony and peace as I read through your scriptures, Lord. For you are my refuge and my shield. Your word is the source of my hope. Your word is the source of my hope. So when life feels hopeless, when you are in the depths of despair, God comes alongside you and encourages you. He cares for you. He loves you so much. And he shows this to you. He meets you in this way through his word. How many of you guys have been in just in the depths of despair, in just this miserable time in your life, and you chose, even though you're in your heart and mind, and do not open that book. Who cares what it says? You're tired. You just want to sleep. You just want to watch TV. You chose to open this book, and you read it, and you were so encouraged. How many of you have experienced that? I experience it weekly. This is God encountering you, meeting you through his word. So as you go through your week and you read it, 
If you are going through hard times, tough times, miserable times, and I know some of you are, open up his word and be encouraged by it. Be comforted by it. Just let him show you his love. He wants to. Desperately, he wants to meet you in this way. Number three, Jesus teaches you through his word. This may seem like the easiest one because that's the way we think the Bible is. It's just a book of instructions. It's a book of teaching. But it's so much deeper than that. We learn so much as we read, as we read scripture. Um, I just think back to this past week when Pastor Garen spoke to the mayor and she told him, okay, well, if your God, she didn't say it like this, but it's like, if your God is so great, make him pray for rain yesterday. Make it, or make it, make it, hold back the rain yesterday. And Pastor Garen, in courage and boldness, said, all right, you got it. And guess what happened? We prayed. So first of all, it didn't just happen. We prayed diligently and fervently as a church, gatherings on Sunday, during Sunday morning, during our prayer gathering on Wednesday, and we were all praying throughout the week, and God held back the rain. And we learned that from Scripture. Looking at the book of Elijah, the the prophet Elijah spoke to the sky and said, hold it back for seven years. Maybe it was three years. I can't remember. (laughs) Hold it back for for a few years. (laughs) If one of you knows, you can correct me on that. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Thanks, Robin. (laughs) Hold it back for a predetermined amount of years, number of years. And God did at his word because a godly person prayed, not for his own glory, but for God's glory. And Lord knows we were not praying this prayer for our glory. We prayed this prayer so that the mayor would know and that so that all of Auburn would know that we serve a miracle-working God who will not back down from a challenge. That's the God that I serve. And I learned that from his word. And I'm going to die by that word. He's so good. I wish I could just communicate. I don't, have the, I don't have the gift. I don't have the communication skills to impart to you my deep love for this book. Because this is God's word given to man when we did not deserve it. 100%. What a blessing it is. And the fact that we can hold it on the day-to-day, like... I have a fairly big Bible, actually. You guys have it mostly on your phones. You can open it any time of the day. Oh, what a blessing. God has given you this hope. Jesus teaches us through his word. Verse 12 says, I praise you. Oh, Lord, teach me your decrees. Lord, just show me what you're doing. Show me what you want to do. Just talk to me. Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. For the teaching of your word gives light, so even the simple can understand. God didn't write this book to be difficult. There's some challenging concepts in here, for sure. Much ink has been spilled over this book in arguments and stuff. But the really important things, who is our God? How do we get to heaven? That's pretty easy to grab. God has made it simple to understand, but you need to come before God as a student, coming before a teacher, willing to be taught, willing to be instructed, willing to sit down as, at his feet like Mary and say, Lord, just t- show me what you're doing. Just teach me. Oh, I pray that over every single one of you, that you would come before God's word as a student before a teacher. Amen? Amen. Number four, getting into it. Jesus disciplines you through his word. Can't talk about that. That's not fair. That's not nice. Jesus disciplines you through his word. Verse 21 says, You rebuke the arrogant. Those who wander from your commands are cursed. Wow, David, calm down. No, seriously. Those who wander from your commands are cursed. But listen to 67. Oh, man. I used to wander off 
I used to be cursed until you disciplined me. But now I closely follow your word. You see, sometimes we look at the discipline of the Lord and see it as like, oh, I don't really want to deal with that. Like, that's just going to stink. Like, it's going to be painful. It's going to hurt. But it's just like a parent disciplining their child. No, no good parent hits their child, spanks their child, or, or talks to their child or gives them rules and regulations because they want to hurt their kid. They discipline their children because they want them to have a good and productive life. It's so important. So when God sees us going the wrong way, yes, discipline comes upon us. But that just proves that you are God's child. The Bible even says, what, what parent doesn't discipline his child? The discipline of the Father proves his love for you because he wants you to get back on the right path. As you read Scripture, as you go through Scripture, how many of you have ever been just punched in the gut by a Bible verse? Oh my goodness. If you read this book enough, you're going you're gonna to get punched in the gut by it. It's going to hurt a little bit. But it's because God wants to redirect you and he wants what's best for you. So when you read Scripture, allow it to change your life. Allow it to say, stop it. Knock it off. You are going the wrong way. And if your life is in misalignment with Scripture, align it to Scripture. Never make the mistake of trying to align Scripture to your messed up life. Don't do it. You look like a fool. And you make Christians look like fools too. Because a Christian means a follower of Christ. We follow him. We turn and align our lives to him. And you learn that through his word. You encounter that through his word. Amen? All right. Last one. Number five. Jesus gives you life through his word. This one was written out in Psalm 19, I think like 30 times. 30 verses talking about how God lifts him up from the pit. God raises him to death, from death. God revives him. He was weeping in sorrow. God gave him life. So many times, time after time after time, David says this, that when he encountered God's word, he was brought back to life. And it's so intrinsic to who God is. He is a life giver. Because God doesn't want to leave you where you're at, in the muck and mire of sin and death. He wants to revive you through his word. That's just who he is. And we see in there, it's verse 25, I lie in the dust. I am a dead man walking. Revive me by your word. Surround me with your tender mercies so I may live. Lord, give me your unfailing love, the salvation that you promise me. God wants to revive you through his word. So deeply is that, who, is that rooted in who he is. And we see that in John 1, 2. What a passage this is. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. God's Word. He existed in the beginning with God. And God created everything through him. And nothing was created except through him. The Word gave life to everything that he created. And his life brought light to everyone. And skip to verse, I think I want to do something else actually. Skip to verse 10. He came into the very world he created, but the world didn't recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn. 
to life, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. And so the word spoken by God became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. You see the word spoken by God, generated by God since the beginning of time, since before the beginning of time. I could talk to you for days how time does not exist, but we're not talking about that right now. Since before the beginning of the concept of time, God has been speaking his word. And that word is his son. Somehow in the divine everything, God's word is also his son. You can think of it this way. I have a son. His name is Daniel. Daniel came from me. He was generated by me. His mom was also involved. He was generated by me. Yeah. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> he was generated by me. And in the same way, God's words were generated by him. God's words came out of him. They issued from him. We call this the eternal generation of the Son. And so in the divine mystery of everything, God's word is his Son. They're the same thing. They are intrinsically linked. God's words spoken by him were the creative power that gave life to the universe, that gives life to you, every single one of you. This living word is in fact God's son. And as the word, Jesus has been revealing God to us for millennia through his word, and then eventually he took on flesh and Jesus came and dwelt among us, continuing to reveal, reveal the presence and the power and, and the, the eternal life of God. Because that's his ultimate purpose, was to give us life. To give us life and life to the fullest. John 10.10 10 says, the th- and destroy. That is not my purpose. This is to give you a rich and satisfying life. He wants you to have the best life possible. Not just here and now. Not just in these 70, 80, 90, 100 years if you are lucky. God wants you to have the best life possible for eternity. And that is why he was willing to to clothe himself in flesh, to remove some of his godly attributes as the word of God present from all eternity come down into our dirty little world. You know the word earth means dirt? So there you go. It's a dirty little word, world. He was willing to come down, debase himself essentially, and die on a cross. Why? To give you life. Because that is what he has always wanted for you. That is his ultimate purpose for you. John 5 verse 24 says, I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me, they have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life. That is why Jesus came, and that's why he gave us his word. So we can encounter him every single day, and in turn, he will give us life, everlasting and life to the fullest. And the same Jesus that brought life to the universe wants to give life to you today. Maybe you are struggling today. Maybe you are in the depths of despair. Maybe you feel like, I, like David did. I lie in the dust. Revive me by your word. 
if you are trapped in sin, trapped in despair, God has a way out for you. And it is through his son. It is through Jesus. He can give you eternal life if you let him. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I have a question for you. Is there anyone here in this room or online who you want to have that life? You want God to breathe his life into you and have eternal life forever and become a Christian. Who wants that? Please raise your hand. Yeah, I see that hand and that hand and that one. Yeah, online, raise your hand too. He sees you too. Amen. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to te- coach you in a prayer together. The whole church is going to pray with, pray with you just so we're all praying together. But if you're praying this for the first time or maybe you're even making a recommitment to Jesus, pray these words to him, not to me. Pray your words to the word who gives you life. All right, let's pray. Say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I turn from my sins. I don't want to live that way anymore. And I turn to you and ask you to give me life. Save me, Jesus. I make you my Lord. And Lord, I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time today or you're making a recommitment to Jesus, please come see me at the Following Jesus book in the corner. You guys are checking your pocketbooks, grabbing your purses. I'm not done yet. Hold on, just wait. Out in, out, in the, out in the corner back there, we have a free book. We have a free course for you to just help you as you follow Jesus. We want to walk alongside you in that. And then finally, to everyone else, how many of you want to encounter Jesus through his word more? Raise your hand. How many of you want to be comforted and guided and taught and even disciplined and giving life from Jesus. Raise your hand. That's just about all of you. So we're going to pray that and you'll get the benefits or the consequences. Here we go. All right, let's pray. I'll, I'll pray and you, you can pray in your head. Jesus, we love you. And Jesus, I, there's just no way I could express how great a gift your word is that you chose to speak to us You've been speaking to us for thousands of years through your word. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for the times where we've gone through life and say, God doesn't talk to me. God doesn't speak to me. God is not present in my life when you gave us your very word to carry in our pockets. If we would only open it up. Lord, I ask that you would speak to your children through your word in a new way. I pray that you would convict them of sin and lead them down your path of righteousness, the right path, the ancient paths, God. Lead them down it. I pray that you would comfort them in times of trouble. I pray that you would revitalize them, give them a even when they're here on earth. And Lord, I pray that you will teach them your ways. Show them how to live their life and show them how to be disciples, followers, apprentices of you. Lord, we submit to you and we love you. And I'm so excited to meet with you again tonight when I open your word. Bless these people in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. God bless. Awesome. Can we give Pastor Christian another round of applause? 
I just love when you shared the story at the very beginning about yours and Sarah's reunion. You guys running up to each other and just gave me the picture of when we're finally going to be reunited with God in heaven, running into his arms. And I know I'm going to be overjoyed to see God, but I don't have to miss him in the meantime. And I just, I love that so much that God is with us through his word. And anytime we do feel like we're missing him, he's right there. We don't have to search. He is there waiting for us. And so I thank you for sharing that, Pastor Christian. I know that blessed me so much. And I know it blessed everyone else here. So thank you. And um, we're going to have ushers coming through the aisles now to collect your Connect cards. So if you filled out a Connect card, um, go ahead and give that to our ushers. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time today to d decide to start following Jesus, I want to congratulate you. That is amazing, but that's just the first step. And so I want to provide some next steps for you. Um, if you go ahead and meet Pastor Christian in the lobby at the Following Jesus table, he's going to get you a free book and a free course resource for you. Don't be overwhelmed. It's so, so helpful for helping you start on this journey of following Jesus, becoming his apprentice, because it's more than just saying, I follow you. It's, it's doing the work. It's learning how to follow Jesus, how to be his apprentice. So I encourage you, go talk to Pastor Christian after service. And if you guys have a moment to stay and help, we want to set up for Pastor, or not Pastor, for Linda and Larry's vow renewal this Friday. So if you guys do have time to stay and help, reset the chairs. Larry, um, could you raise your hand? There's Larry in the red shirt, super cool guy. He's going to be in charge. Jerry, oh, Jerry, I'm so sorry, but he knew who I was talking about. Jerry. Jerry, we're friends. I don't know why that happened. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Jerry is in charge. Go ahead and go to Jerry, and he'll help you figure out um, a way to help so we can get set up. But I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being here this morning, and have a great week.